All right, so I'll be doing a demo on this farm and sort of going through some of the tools everyone will be using day to day. So mobile has two apps. It has the mobile app and the web application. Now both work very sim similarly. And um, what we'll be doing is doing the web app demo, but the functions are the same and the processes are the same. So whatever we show you here will work on the phone. It'll work offline on the phone as well. Um, now there's three main pages of mobile. So people use mobile day, day to day. The places they'll be going um, is either the paddocks list, the mobs list, or the maps list, or the maps view. Now I'll start in the map view because that's um, that's sort of the place where most people like to get a visual representation, representation of the property. Um, and we do cover a few key things. So one thing I'll start on is um, mob movements. So when we're out there in the paddock, so one of the most common, the, the most common thing to do in mobile is to move your livestock around. And there's a few simple ways to do it and there's a few little tricks and, and things along the way as well, which I'll show you now. Um, to move a mob, it's pretty simple. If it's just from one paddock to the next, you can literally just pick them up, um, either drag them on, on your phone and move them to the paddock they're going, like so. Um, and you can just select move mob if it's the whole whole mob. Now, if it's um, if it's a, a split, for example, like you're splitting just, say, half of this mob off, you can go to the advanced move mob move split options. And this will give you a, more, a lot more options um, when, you, when you're doing that. Um, and with the split options here, you can select here, and we can select how many, how many livestock are splitting off. So let's just say the 70 are splitting off here from the Brahmin cows. Um, and you can reassign classes and ages if you do that as well. Um, so maybe I'm splitting off um, the 70 because they're dry, for example, and press move mob. So yep, you can see this is now in triangle here. You can get a history of every movement on the place. So if I go into this paddock here, if I click on the paddock itself, one, I get a bit of key information and then I can go into paddock info. And then on the mobile phone, there's a history tab and you can get the history of all your previous splits and moves and you can see the full list here going back forever. Now this is just a test property or a made up property that we have created. So the data isn't, isn't, um, isn't realistic, but you can at least see the history there. Um, and we can see the cows in there too. And we can also see the historic livestock over time of a paddock and stocking rates over time as well, um, which is really cool. So that's sort of some of the movements. So I'll keep on going. So that once you went now, if you move mobile day to day, you're often moving, splitting, and you're merging mobs together as well. So say if I've I, um, these cattle that I've left in back corner, they're coming to triangle as well. And we're well, coming to the yards or coming to triangle like a holding paddock. I can move them in here. I'll press move mob. And what will happen is we'll get this option to merge mobs together. So when you're merging mobs together, the, um, yeah, only the, if the breed and gender are the same, you'll get this option to merge mobs. So what this will take you to the view mob section. We'll take you to the paddock page where you can view these mobs and you select both of them as so and and merge those mobs like that and you'll get come to come to this page it'll make sure that you've selected the correct classes and stuff like so it'll, it'll combine all the classes together so if there's something you want to get rid of um or ages that aren't there anymore um you can get rid of them and change that within this um view as well and we can go merge mob. Now, I know this says DSC and I've got Brahmin cows, which makes no sense. You can change your stocking unit to LSU or SU or whatever you like as well. Um, merge mob. Beautiful. So I've moved a couple of mobs um, into triangle now. And I'll move another one in there because sometimes we do some processing, like we're, say, we're preg testing or something like that. So you're often moving in a bunch of different mobs. So I'll move these in, ones in here too. And I can see here there's actually two mobs in this one. So there's some steers here as well, which I'll just, um, or mixed sex, um, wieners, which are probably steers. I'll just leave them out in the paddock. Um, so I can deselect them um, and move those cows in. And I'll merge them as well together. Merge mob. So... We've got these mobs merged together now um, in triangle paddock. 
and we're going to now apply, apply a vaccination. So we say they're in the holding pack, they're in the, they're in the yard and you've merged them together and you're actually going to vaccinate them while they're in the yards here. Um, and the way we do that is we select the mob, we select it again, we get a bunch of options. There's a bunch of heaps of different things you can do to um, your livestock in mobile. And one of them is uh, add mob action. And a mob action can be anything like a feed record, a treatment, vaccination, any of the above. Um, and you can add mob action here. And you can do the number affected here. So if it, sometimes you're doing like a, um, a record just on one animal, um, say for some um, antibiotic, antibiotics or something like that, you can just go number affected one and leave in the notes what, what, um, which cow number it was. Um, but for this example, we're maybe going to vaccinate the whole mob and vaccinate and you can add products here as well so i'll get back to this in a second but you have an inventory with all your products in it um like so and i'm going to use the five in one um yeah and you put in your quantity per head um california or something um for the vaccination and any notes you want to apply and you apply action. Cool. Great. So yeah, some products being used up. So it'll go, it'll tell me that's happened, but we can ignore that. And if we view that mob, you'll see now it's in a withhold. So that that vaccination product had a um had a withholding period on it. And that red dot there means that that's currently in withhold now. So I can select this um, view mob. You can see when it comes out of withhold here in the safe date, 19th to the 12th. Um, and I can also jump in and see that vaccination record um, as well. Make, make, I'm just making all this up as I fly, fly along so the, the records aren't 100% re aren't, aren't realistic, but um, we'll just do, make do. Um, yeah, so you can see that safe date there and um, and the vaccination record. So, yeah, as, as a worker or someone that's using mobile data today, that's how you do that. Um, if you want to see some more summaries of the previous mob actions that have done to this this mob or the mobs it's come from, you can see here um, the full history, the full treatment history of this mob down the bottom. Um, so it could be anything from feeding, drenching. You can filter that down to whatever you want to see. And we also have summaries on all this as well. So you can go into your mob action summary and you can see all the most recent, yeah, the re most recent, um, yeah, um actions that you've done as well so this is a, if for compliance and different things um you can get all this information nice and quickly and clearly um as well there we go perfect um now so i was just talking about the inventory before so one thing you might be doing um quite often is you know buying more say vaccine like product um and I've just noticed before that we run out of some five in one. So if we go to inventory, um, there's three different inventory options, animal health, herbicides, pesticides, pesticides, um, pesticides and fertilizers, it's all your paddock chemicals, um, and feed, grain and storage, which is a bit of more of a, a general one, which you can put nearly anything in there. Um, now I'll go into animal health and this five in one. This has gone negative. Um, so... The first thing you have to do when you're adding inventory items in is add in the inventory item. Say if you can't, we always use a certain type of um, chemical, you add that in first, and then it's just a matter of topping up that item. So I'm just going to add a batch. Um, this would be a batch ID for compliance um, and how much you're adding in on that batch. So it might be something like 500 mils. Um, and then you can also enter these records as well for compliance, or you can do that later. So add new batch in there and you can see this um yeah so within this chemical um it will update in a second um you'll you'll get a full history of every single um action you've done um so you can see here that i've recently applied something and that was my recent record um and you'll get a full graph of the usage over any time period that you want so over the last 12 months you can see how much you've used for a product there too um, which is really handy stuff. And going a little bit further, so I've covered sort of treatments on animals. 
Um, you can also do treatments on paddocks as well. And it's just exactly the same process, but you're just selecting that paddock instead. So this is a very common thing. You say if we're doing a spray record, you select a paddock and you add paddock action instead of a mob action. And you can add multiple products to that paddock action um, at different rates or, or whatever it is and apply that action. And it gets saved to the paddock forever and it'll get saved to the, the paddock summary, uh, the, the property summaries as well. Um, and that could be anything. It could be a fit and offer record. It could be, yes, yeah, so it's the full history of what's been happening. Um, awesome. So it's just more general things when you're using mobile day to day. Um, you might open up some gates or close some gates in paddocks. So when you open up gates in mobile, it creates this white line around the paddock. Or if you're viewing it on the mobs list, you'll it'll say which paddocks are open with which. So I can see that GSON's paddock is open with Creek. Um, and I've actually just closed this gate off. So I'm going to um, change that. So I'm going to click on the paddock, click on it again, and I'll get manage open gates. And if you want to add, you know, add some more paddocks here to um, open with, open between, you can do so. And it's ordered within closest to the paddock. So it should be the ones at the top, should be the ones that you're um, doing that to. Um, or you can just close all gates between all paddocks like that. And next time we look at the map, hopefully that little white line has disappeared. And it's the same process with opening gates between paddocks. Um, so it works just like that. And when you open gates between paddocks, uh, Mobile's pretty smart about it. So if it's got livestock here, it'll sort of, um, the data will now be between two paddocks and your stocking rates or livestock will um, be measured over those two paddocks, not just the one. Um, so it's doing some smart stuff with your um, stock, sort of this um, average stocking rates. Um, numbers here and, and graphs as well. So uh, that's open gates. Um, feel free to pump in some questions into the chat. Um, another gen another sort of general thing you'll be doing if you're using mobile day today is um, maybe your manager um, added in some tasks for you um, on within mobile and you know it's given you a list to complete. So you can see your task list on the left here. And there's a bunch of different, um, yeah, just basically a list of tasks and you can filter, filter it to your own tasks, the ones that have been assigned to you. And I'll select on one. So you can either select, so they can be either geolocational tasks or they can be just uh, like in the list itself. This one, for example, has a geolocation. It's a fix a hole in the fence. Um, so someone's gone out there and they've done that task. It's as simple as clicking on it on the map or in the task list and and marking that task is now complete. And what will happen is the person that assigned that task will get notified that that task is done um, as as well. Um, and if you get assigned a task, you'll be notified that you've been assigned a task as well. And it will have disappeared from the map, which is great. So that becomes in the is a historic task list which you can which you can access. Um, and see, you know, what was achieved in the day and stuff like that. But it's just really good. Like I think at home, so we have a family farm about um, an hour and a half north of Melbourne, which is um, near Avenal. Um, and we often use it for like, uh, so all your weed locations. Um, so we just put in weed spots around the around the farm. And when we get time, we'll, um, yeah, we'll, someone will go along and, and spray all those little weed spots um, throughout the farm. Um, so that's one example. Um, but it's just one of those good things you can just, um, if you're if you're a worker or a manager and you see, you know, there is um, a hole in a fence or there is something to fix up um, on a trough or whatever it is, you can just um, you can just add that task. And every, anytime you're adding something to the map, it's just to the right, uh, this big plus button down the bottom, and you can add that task in. And it's as simple as zooming to your location, which you'll see as a little blue dot on the mobile phone or um, onto, a, onto an asset or whatever it is. Um, and adding that task and yeah, um, leak in pipe or what, whatever that is, right, but it, add new task. So it's as simple as that. So it's good for people, workers or managers to be able to yeah, just um, add those tasks in on the fly when they're going around the paddocks as, as well. Um, yeah, I think um, another great thing, if you've got workers or um, on the place or family members on the place. Great thing is to be able to map out your map out sets as well. So you can map out your dams, troughs, um, roads, 
um, stuff like that. So people, when people are moving livestock into a into a paddock, they know where the where the water points are um, as well, and they'll get that geolocation online or offline. So having new people on on board is really handy for that. Um, and also, if you've got a contractor in, say a spray contractor, you can add them in, or a fertilizing contractor, whatever it is, um, mustering contractor, you can add them in as a, a as a as a user, not a user, sorry, a Mobile Connect um, access. I'll show you how to do that. So we have this thing called Mobile Connect here, and you can add in people like accountants, contractors, farm advisors. They get a specific view of Mobile. Um, so this is this is an admin feature, but um, you can invite your contractor. And what they'll be able to see is um, is basically the map view, and that's it. And they'll be able to see a tasks assigned to them. Um, so when they go to the map, they'll be able to see, you know, maybe a bunch of dots over the map, and that um, will be the paddocks they need to spray. So and they'll be able to see their location in there. So it's really handy um, for those sort of things as well. Um, and also, as a worker, sometimes a property chat is a good place to to go as well. Um, if you're using Mobile Day today, um, just to leave a note or a reminder um, in here. I'm not sure what's going to be in here. So it's a test account. Um, yes, yeah, sweet. So it's just exactly. That's a, that's a great <laughs> cows are out on the ring road. Yeah, okay. Um, probably not out in the ring road, but um, yeah. So example would be like low on five in one. Next time someone goes into the store. We grab some. Um, just a quick little note. People get notified about this on that they've got access to mobile. Um, so it's a good place to leave a note um, and, or a reminder or or just have a chat about what's happening on the farm itself. Um, I'm going to jump in quickly. Yeah. We've had a question come through um, from Callan about attaching, like, is it possible to attach images to a task um, to show, yeah. say, the extent of a damage um, on a fence? Yeah, that's that's a great question, and it's something that we're going to do. So no, not at the moment, not yet. So it's probably to be one of the first um, things we'll do early next year. In the in, in the first six months of next year, it'll be done. So we're looking at ways where we can add files across the app. It could be in a sales record, like a um, it could be your, your kill sheet in a sales record, or uploading a PDF there, or for example, a image on a task or an image in a batch so you can just take a photo of the batch id for example um stuff like that so just to make we want to make mobile even you know more powerful or quicker access to data and one of the and an image tells a thousand words um so yeah in the future when we're when you're adding in this leak in pipe um there will be i'd say six months time there will be a button here it's like add image or add file um and that'd be as simple as uploading uploading that onto mobile and um, the person that next access that task can go have a look at that and and see the exact location in the paddock and and all those sort of things so um that's coming um but at the moment there's um no way to do that but i'd, I'd say give us give us six months i know we're, we're early stages of working at the technical um work involved there so um it's definitely being prioritized great question yeah thanks katie Um, all right, I'll just, another few, few general things I'll add. Um, sorry for any mobile faithful if um, this stuff is boring to you guys, but for the people that are um, yeah no, new to the app or using mobile every day and they just want to get a better understanding of it, I'm still going to go through a few things. Um, one other key thing is say we have, I'm just going to stick on this mob, but um, we've added, we've got, got some cows in calves in for weaning time. We've got to count on the weaners. Um, it's time to add them into the into the mob um, or the calves into the mob. The way we could, way we do that, add that natural increase is we just add a new mob. So you don't actually add it to the, the, the mob here. You add a new mob to mobile itself. Um, and there's an option here called natural increase. And it's the same with the purchase. Um, and you select the paddock that we're in. And then we go down this list and you're adding in um, what exactly they are. Let's go mixed sex, 2025. I don't know, 2024. Well, it could be 2025 targets. It depends how you want to want to do it. Um, add a class and we got 120 or something. 
I'm going to add in notes here. So we've got like 95%. Um, um, yeah, like 95% uh, carbs um, to you. Yeah, you know what I mean? Um, your rate. And they're, now they're added into that mob. So we can now see that they're, they're here as well. Um, and you can leave a record on the on the cam up as well by mob action if you wanted to um, track that um, record as well. And um, those will those will be summaries on all your natural increases, and all that filters through to our recon livestock reconciliation reports, um, which can be found here under reports. Um, but I won't go into that now because it's more of an admin feature. Um, cool. And it's the same with adding purchases, adding sales. Um, adding purchases, um, you're doing it by that add mob button. If you are selling mob or you got a casualty, um, it's quite simple. Let's just say these um, steers down the bottom got sold. Let's say the, let's say one of these steers died, unfortunately. And so we report a casualty and we can say how many died and the reason for casualty method of disposal. These are compliance fields. You don't have to fill them out if you don't want to. Um, you can go back and fill them out if you need to later, I guess. Um, record casualty there. And that casualty has been created. Um, it'll be in our casualties record and go through to our reports as well. And um, the rest of these, say, steers have been sold. So there's a sell mob button there. You can put in your price. And, and off we go. And sold too. And there's all these different fields you can put in there too. Um, yeah. So there's some general, just general use of mobile um, that I wanted to cover. And what I'm going to do now is open up to you guys. So put it in the chat um, and uh, any questions that you guys have, um, we can get into it. Um, I know there's some questions people have asked um, that I'll get to as well um, pre-webinar um, and I'll continue with them. But if you've got any questions right now, chuck them in the chat and I'll, I'll ask you to get off mic maybe to, um, to start deep dive a bit deeper. Um, otherwise, I'll try and answer as best as I can. But if there's any questions, please, please let me know. All right. So a couple of questions that were asked about for the people that have um, uh, put their name down for the webinar is. We did have a question um, come through earlier, Jock, about being able to edit paddocks after you've already added them to the map. Yeah, great. So a common thing that happens in on a farm is um, we might split a paddock. So we might um split jack's paddock down the middle um you know because we're, we're creating smaller paddocks for different grazing purposes or whatever it is um so the way we do that we actually simply edit this paddock so we go to paddock info and then we press edit up the top right hand corner um edit here it comes up with a little window and we change this paddock to its new um, new position. Update. You know, update the grazable area as well. Um, and I'm going to change this to Jax1. So this paddock that I've updated, that I've split, that I've done this, so I won't create a split and create a new paddock, but this is this is the original paddock, and it will keep all the history um, of of that paddock, of the previous paddock. So it's good to edit it, not delete it. Um, so you keep all this history um, of the paddock and of the previous paddock. Um, and so that's a good way to do it. Now if we go back to map, the, 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 the next, next thing you have to do is you're going to have to create a new paddock. And this will be a fresh paddock. So it won't have the history. You'll have to, the history will be starting from, from fresh. Um, and you simply add the paddock by the bottom right button and you go around the corners here. Also, if you want the magnet to work, I think you have to turn it on or off. So that's that's like a snap to boundary feature. Anyway, double click to finish. Um, double click to finish and add paddock. We'll call this Jax2. Um, or maybe it's a pasture paddock. And we can change this grazable area. Maybe it only has 100 hectares of grazable area. Add new paddock. And that's how you do that. Great. Now, 
a feature we've just released. Um, let me know if there's any questions, Katie. But um, Yeah, I've got a yep. question, um, two questions actually. Um, can you just go over the snap to boundary feature again, please? Yeah, so it has been broken in the past, but I'll just check if it works. So if I click on this paddock and I go to paddock info and edit this paddock. Now, this snap to boundary. So got this little magnet button up here. If I select that, and it's got those those little, ooh. Well, if we might have helped, helped us find a bug if this doesn't work. So this will be good. We'll fix it ASAP if so. Snap to boundary. All right, so yeah, it isn't working. <laughs> so good find, whoever, whoever was that. Um, Katie and I'll make a note of that and we'll get it fixed within within probably by tomorrow. But basically you, you select that magnet button and you drag the pins close to a boundary and it'll let go and it'll snap towards it. Um, so we'll just double check that's working properly. Um, we get off this call and we'll get the developers to fix it by tomorrow if that's not working properly. But it's a great little feature. Um, it'll just help with creating more accurate boundaries. Um, it's the same when you're adding a new paddock as well. Um, so you add new paddock this way and you're zooming into say location and snap to boundaries on and it should snap to boundary, which it's not. So we'll make sure that's fixed um, for you guys um, by tomorrow. Yeah, good question. Hey, Jock, another question. Um, I would call it grazing over here in New Zealand, but um, grazing adjustment, if you're sending stock to um, a feedlot, what would be the best way to do that in mobile? Yeah, it depends if it's your feedlot or if it's a, a different feedlot. Um, but so you're, you've got a, oh, so you've got livestock going off to adjustment or grazing. Yeah. Is that right, Katie? Yeah, I'm assuming yeah. that's what you're asking, Helen. But um, yeah, it looks like if you're sending um, livestock to another property that doesn't belong to you. Yeah, so there's a couple of ways you can do it. So if you want those livestock numbers to be, um, to be saved within this property, um, you can just add a, a paddock on the side, just like a little paddock that says adjustment on it. And you can move livestock to it, like the moving off farm to adjustment, and you can just move move them to that adjustment paddock. Um, but in your reports, um, the you'll still say that this pro property had, you know, those that much livestock over time here on this property. So another way you can do it is you can create an adjustment property, literal another property. So you just go to create property on the bottom here. Um, and you just call it adjustment or whatever you want to call it. You can even map out the paddocks that they're registered to or the property and just, just drop them in there. So um, I'll just show you. So I've got, oh, this is uh, my parents' home block. Um, and let's just pretend. So what will happen there is you'll have an adjustment property. All those numbers will be taken off the place um, and you'll have, and the adjustment property will be creating records on the adjustment property. So you'll be able to see the change in numbers on the adjustment um, over time. So it's a good way to do it, I think, have a separate property for it. Um, so you'll be able to see this year we had 500 on adjustment, 500 cattle on adjustment, next year we had zero, and this year, following year we had 200 or whatever. And you can get that graph over time and, and then also on the, on the main block. Um, with your reports as well, you can concatenate it so you can join the reports together. So if you want to add your adjustment and your main property together, I can show you um, in reports here. I can select multiple properties, see? And that, um, yeah, so you can still get your full full livestock reconciliation report, even if you've got another property there. Um, and the way to move mobs across properties is you say you select one. So this is um, my parents' family farm. Um, and select a, select a mob, go move mob. Um, you can change the property. So you select that adjustment property and the paddock. You want to push, push them into and you press move mob and it'll take them off this place and move them to adjustment. Okay, cool. Does that make sense? Yeah, great. Any other questions there, Katie? No, no, no other questions. Um, hopefully we answered your questions, Callan, but keep them coming. Yeah, if Callan, if you, if you feel like to go off mute, if you want to keep talking about it um, as well. But... Otherwise, what I will do is um, there is a new feature being released. So um, recently about changing, uh, depending on uh, different stocking units. So Mobile has um, always had DSC as a stocking unit. Um, we now have the option to have um, 
nearly any unit um, in there. So you can have LSU if you're in Northern Australia, SU for New Zealand, um, also AE for Northern Australia as well. So I can you can just go in here into your settings. You can change it, say adult equivalent, um, save changes. Yep, that would have saved, I think. Yep. And you can go back to your pages and you can see that everything's been converted to AE um, here as well. So the total AE, um, yeah, that's all changed. Beautiful. Yeah, it's changed as expected, um, which is pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, on de it's on per device. So you'll have to change the setting on your mobile device and your computer. Um, so yeah, if you have, if you use a different stocking unit than DSC, um, yeah, you can now, you can now change that and, and all the reporting will be done in that, in that unit as well. So if you go to a paddock and you see, so yeah, strip here, paddock info, and you want to get your average AE for this example over the last 12 months, there it is. Um, and you can also get this graph here. and get your AE average for this example, or SU, whatever you're using over the last 12 months, you can see that AE average is actually dropping. Um, that's the red line, it's the average. Um, it's pretty cool. So anyway, you can sort of see your paddock performance and stuff that way. Um, so just wanted to mention that because it's a brand, you know, it's a brand new feature um, there as well, um, which a lot of people have been calling out for. So I'm glad we could get that across the line. Hey, Doc, we've had a um, question come through. Can you import rainfall from FarmBot? Oh, it's a great question. Um, probably is confidential. Um, <laughs> um, look, I can, all, what I can say is um, we're we're chatting to a bunch of IoT companies at the moment um, about integrating with mobile. So in the future, say an IoT, IoT company integrate with mobile, um, what you'll be able to see is the location of, say, a rain gauge out in the paddock. So it would be something like this. Um, like one of these dots here and you select it and you'll be able to get, get all that rainfall information. So yeah, um, this is just a, a dam location, but you'll be able to get your, you know, straight from a farm bot or equivalent or other rain gauge system you're using to get that information going straight into mobile from them. So you don't have to go to two apps, it's just straight in your mobile map, um, which is really cool, really valuable. Um, and then the next step for us would be, you know, getting that data straight into our rain gauges um, here as well. So, um, I think watch the space is something we want to really want to work towards because I think um, ag tech works better together. So, um, and it's pretty early days in ag tech for integration. So um, we're, I think all these companies are just starting to get the capability to be able to do it. Cause there is a lot of um, sort of back and forth and working together and, and technical complications around doing this stuff. Um, and we're in a really good place to do it. So um, yeah, really excited. I'm, I'm personally really excited about working with these companies um, to bring these features to you guys. So, um, yeah, watch this space. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, um, you can export your, um, farm bot CSV file and send it to us and we'll put it into your own grade, just thing, but there's been a double entry there. So you might be able to wait and see as well. Yeah. Nice. Now let's just, cover, let's just make sure I got covered all the questions. Um, adding new users, um, it was a question. So, if you're a fund manager or um, family member that's you know ma managing the mobile, mobile account, it's quite easy to add in extra users. You go into settings and you select here. This is a test properties slash my parents' property, so it's got heaps of people in there. But you see all the people that currently use it, you can kick people out if they need to be removed. Um, or you can promote them to admin. So there's different levels. So admins like is owner, which is can see and do everything. Admins, almost the same, but they can't do billing. A user can do everything, but they can't see sensitive information like sales, um, lots of reconciliation reports, purchases, anything sort of financial. Um, and then there's view only as well, which they, they can't do anything, but they can see mostly everything except for um, sensitive information. Um, so that's a really good one as well um, there or remove. And to add them in, you just select uh, this plus button, invite user. Um, this user limit's been reached, reached, but you'll be able to put their email in. They'll be sent an email from us saying, hey, you've been invited to this property. They create a password and they get instant access straight in. 
Um, so that's the way you you do that. And I mean, mobile works better when this, when everyone's got access. Um, just the choosing the level of access is is the thing you got to think about. Um, and then on top of that, I mentioned it before, but you can in mobile connect, you can go a bit further and add, say, a farm advisor in. Um, maybe it's your agronomist who can access the entire property, but property but can't maybe make edits. Um, but every every mobile connect person here has a different view. So the accountants mainly last at rec reconciliation reports. Um, so they're dif they're different. They're kind of like a different category of users, um, like third parties. Um, but you can you can add people in that way too. Um, and they're free. They don't they don't add to your. So when you look at the pricing model here, they don't add to this limit here. They're on they are on bonus bonus user uh, additions. Yep. All right. Well, if I think if there's any more questions, any more questions, Katie? No, no more questions. Beautiful. Well, I don't want to. I think we're take, coming up to forty five minutes, so I don't want to take up um, any of your valuable time. Um, if you have any questions, uh, more questions, or if you're too shy to ask in the webinar, um, feel free to email us and hello at bubble.io. Um, also go to our website here and get our phone numbers. Um, depending on which website you're on, Australia, New Zealand, you'll get a different number here. Um, give that number a buzz. We're always on the phones um, on weekdays. Um, so give us a buzz. Give us, uh, yeah, and we'll be able to help you out. Um, with any questions you have, um, if you're a worker or a manager or, or the owner of the account, doesn't matter. Um, give us a buzz and we'll, we'll be able to help you out. Um, no webinar next month, but uh, we'll back again February. If you want to, you can still sign up for the webinar today if you wanted to. It's the same webinar sign up list link. So if you if you want to make sure you're reminded about next February's webinar, um, feel free to, to re-sign up via that link we used last time. All right. Thanks everyone so much for, for dropping in. Um, and yeah, I hope this was really helpful. Sweet. All right, Katie, you can, um, I think you can close the meeting because you're the host, but yeah, thanks everyone.